What's the first way that you know something about something? This is called epistemology. How do we know what we know? <clears throat> the first thing of identifying something is to name it. If you don't name it, it has no existence. Yeah? But we name Carla separate from Tom because we can recognize that separation. But when you first look at the back, what's the rhomboids, what's the trapezius, that's all sort of lost. And, and, okay, so once you know something about something, to enough to name it, enough to separate it from everything else in the universe, what's the second level of knowing something about something? Is to know, is to measure it. That starts with a kid with, ha! That's a measurement. Okay, 112 degrees Celsius, that's a measurement too. But ha mm -hmm. is the beginning of measuring something. In language, that comes about with adjectives. Hot, cold. You take the noun and then you measure something about the noun with an adjective. That's the second level of epistemology. The third level of epistemology is verbs, which is if, then. A causative relationship between one thing and another. If you have a medial collateral ligament tear, then you do 25 reps on the quad machine for six days from it. These are the kinds of formulae that come out of physiotherapy. The physiotherapists who are coming to us are realizing the limitation of this kind of thinking. But we live in a society that values this kind of thinking. Ever since Newton, we value this if-then causative Cause laws of force and motion kind of thing, cause effect. Mm -hmm. But we are asking, Ida Rolf was asking me and I am asking you, to jump into an Einsteinian world, sure. not with Einsteinian mathematics, but a world of relationship, yeah. right? It's the law of relativity. How does energy relate to matter? How does space relate to time and gravity? And this is what we're doing in the body, and it sounds so fuzzy and new age at first. Oh, well, this shoulder isn't relating to that hip. And Michael and I and others in the school are trying to take that relational language and wrestle it to the ground and make it real, make it more real. We're not that good at it yet. But we're going there because that relational way of doing something, if you want another parallel to this, Newton to Einstein, but Freud to you. Mm -hmm. okay. Freud put the psyche in cause-effect term. Jung mapped the psyche in mm -hmm. relational terms. I go off, I would say, I, I'm going to toot my own horn now. Eiderolf imagined the body in that relational way, and Tom Myers mapped it in that way. Mm. But the anatomy trains is only one small part of the bigger map that is now emerging. And it may be one that stands or one that doesn't stand. I don't really care about that. But that is the attempt, is to make a relational language that doesn't look at the range of motion of this particular or this particular ligament, but okay. at the body as a whole, which sometimes defies Hussein Bolt has a short has a short leg and a scoliosis. Are you doing him a favor if you cure him of his scoliosis? <laughs> that's a that's a hard question. When it comes into that, but it's that relational thing that I think is forcing physiotherapy into more and more curly cues in their theories, because the theories are based on this solar system that is about yeah. to change, and we are part of that change.